So, um, had a couple thoughts before going to sleep tonight, and uh, my lovely girlfriend Kristen is going to record them. I didn't take my, my stupid mouth <laughs> off. So anyways, I was watching a video, and it's all about uh, athletes returning to play after they get injured. And there are a lot of comparisons and similarities to what we're actually doing at CrossFit and Sino, and I thought I'd try to explain them in a little detail so that we continue to give a better understanding of why we program the way we do why we run an assessment the way we do. So basically the, the concept is um, we run this assessment for all new clients now called a functional movement screen and we're looking for a certain score that helps us kind of not predict but understand where injury risk lays so that we can help um, do corrective exercise and prescribe in such a way that people won't get injured while they're with us or will help um, minimize the risk of injury as they progress. And we're a CrossFit gym, so we want people to eventually be able to transition into doing CrossFit and doing aggressive or sport movements. Uh, CrossFit's basically a sport at this point. And so we want a safe pathway to do that. And the analogy I give for, um, for injury risk is something like this. Like, if you drive a car one mile a month, your risk of getting in a car accident is very low. If you drive a car 100 miles a month, that injury risk increases significantly. Um, and then um, that's very similar to exercising. So if you do one push-up a month, your injury risk during a push-up is very low because of just limitations and exposure. If you draw, if you do 100 push-ups in a row, your injury risk goes up dramatically because you're doing you're being exposed to them far more frequently. And then on top of that, you're adding variables like fatigue and overexposure and um, things like that. So uh, to go back to the car analogy, it would be something like instead of just doing 100 miles a month of driving, let's say you did 100 miles of uphill driving or 100 miles of driving at night, or 100 miles of driving in the fog, or 100 miles of driving in the rain. Each of those is a step above in terms of the risk exposure that you're um, placing yourself under. And exercise is much the same. So doing 100 push-ups, then doing 100 weighted push-ups, then doing 100 weighted push-ups with one foot off the ground. Every time we add a variable, we add risk of, expo uh, we add risk of injury by exposure and by variable. So um, this whole assessment at the beginning is a way to help us understand when is it appropriate to add more exposure or add more variability or add both so that as we do this in a progressive manner, we can move people into a return to play environment where they can perform CrossFit or whatever sport it is that they want to go to with a minimal injury risk or at least us and you, the client, being aware of where that risk lies so that we can make educated decisions on how to train I think eventually where this will lead to is probably having two separate programs where when the assessment shows us that CrossFit is not the ideal fitness regimen, we're going to help prescribe for a short period of time, uh, maybe just a simple strength and conditioning regimen that will onboard in, or transition into CrossFit after doing another assessment and that assessment showing that the injury risk threshold is being met. So that's my thoughts for tonight.